Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kizma. I'm Kizma and today's episode is part one of a three-part series called Spiritual Detox. And in today's episode, we're going to be looking at all the people, places, things, events that are required to leave your world. It's called Community Over Competition. For show notes and resources, you can go to illuminationacademy.net forward slash INK142. And now let's get started. Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kizma, bringing you ancient wisdom for modern day success so that you can have the mindset to get your life and business set. As always, thank you for tuning in. And if you're new to the podcast, take a quick second to hit the subscribe button in iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. If you want to get the inside info for this and every episode, as well as some free gifts, go to illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. And now let's dive in to get your mindset for your life and business set. Well, hello there, Nick. Hello there, Kizma. Happy New Year. Happy New Year almost. So for those of you listening, we're actually recording this episode on New Year's Eve. This is what we do for fun. This is what we do for fun. It's like so geeky. We're kind of sneaky hermits on New Year's Eve. I, I'd love <laughs> to hear what everyone did on New Year's Eve. We don't go out New Year's Eve. We can't. Well, we're out. We're at the office. Yeah, I guess that. And there's a couple other out. geeks here too. Like yeah. I'm like I'm shockingly surprised because at Common Ground it's usually pretty quiet on the weekend and holiday. But there's a couple of couple guys rolling around. I think because there's champagne in the fridge. Oh, like maybe is. everyone's just waiting till. If it's not claimed, they're just going to pop it. Today, we're talking about community over competition. Right. And I want to give a shout out to a person who was on our podcast last year, Peg Fitzpatrick. She's amazing. You can find her on Instagram. Check out her blog. She's just a social media ninja. And we'll put in the show notes the link to her episode last year. But she was really big on talking about community over competition and why competition is just not a world she's going to play in. And I know for us, as you know, we worked through the episodes for the universal laws as I teach my prosperity code. One of the main laws is the law of supply. Yeah. That there is a not more than enough for everyone. And so if we see somebody doing something or somebody having success, and the tendency in our mind is like, oh, how can they have that? I'll never get it because they did. Or why did they do so much better? That is working against the law of supply. And it's it's a competitive nuance, mm -hmm. which will diminish your prosperity field and health, wealth, love, spirituality. So the idea is that when you see someone doing well, you've got to tap into the law of supply, meaning if there's enough for them, there's more than enough for you. And if someone else can do it, you can do it. If you can do it, your clients, your students, your family, whomever can do it. This is community. Yeah. And I don't know about you, like having been in the music world, competition is real. But I do, and I do know there's a way to focus on it that's really healthy. It's sort of, again, that community spirit knowing there's enough for everyone and not everyone can win every audition or every game or whatever, but it's the attitude towards the journey towards the excellence that really makes us thrive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just think it's really easy to get sucked into competition mm -hmm. and comparison, right? which I think go really hand in hand there yeah. uh, in some really insidious ways. Mm -hmm. Like you're not feeling, maybe you're not feeling so great about yourself and mm -hmm. all of a sudden you find yourself scrolling through Facebook or Instagram well, then all you can expect to, to have that sense of comparison or maybe you're feeling, um, you know, like you're not good enough or mm -hmm. having some doubt about your own self or having that inner critic start to chime. Well, it's just going to jack up that voice mm -hmm. so that so that you can, you know, stay stay stuck in that cycle of comparison, right. looking at others and things right. like that. And it's something I think that we see a lot of. And what what I find about it is that it's really it is really insidious. Mm -hmm. It's contagious. So you're scrolling, you're scrolling, yeah. and then it's like oh, it's like somewhere along the way it turns. You mm -hmm. know? Somebody says something, you know, you grab onto something in your own mind, or maybe mm -hmm. it happens in your business or mm -hmm. in your in your work, you know, with the w whatever that is. But it starts to get in there, and then it's like there's a comparison thing mm -hmm. that leads into this competition. Then we're needing to prove ourselves, and that's just a weird place to be. And 
I'm pretty sure for those of you listening that have done this, where you've scrolled through the feed and you've started looking at somebody or other people and comparing yourself and feeling like you're competing, you will notice in your body, in your heart, in your mind, it gets heavy fast. Yep. It really, it's like this constriction. You might even notice your posture and then all of a sudden your mood goes sour. And that's what I mean. Like that is not operating with the spiritual laws. It's operating against them. What's the best thing to do in your mind, Nick? What's a tip that our listeners can take? Well, the first thing is to stop it. <laughs> stop. Like stop. Like just stop. It's kind of like stop, drop and roll, you know, Yeah. close the Facebook, close the Instagram, slowly step away and cut your cords, mm-hmm. you know, so that you can kind of get back into you. Mm-hmm. you know, that's more like triage. Okay. First things first is like, maybe just not do that right now. It's a choice though. It is. Sometimes choice. easier said than done. Yeah. I've seen you scrolling. <laughs> I've scrolled. I'm scrolling How a lot. How do you think I know this? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, and I want to insert, there's an algorithm supposedly in Facebook that by the time you turn on your phone, open your computer, there's a certain amount of seconds before your notifications pop up that keep many humans just right there on their Facebook notification. Fascinating. They have it down to a science. So you've got to have your wits about you and know that you, it's like, this is the algorithm you want to work against. You do not want to work with this algorithm. You want to work with the universal laws and against the Facebook algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they were mutual exclusive. I, I guess I'll have to give that some more consideration. That's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the first thing is like, just maybe take a pause. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think it's really worth looking at, you know, the algorithm in your own life. Right. Okay. So mm-hmm. what is that? What is that algorithm of choices and actions and words and decisions and habits that keeps you circling around the same communities and the same people? Right. Because today's episode is really about in this spiritual detox series is who, what needs to be removed from your life. Right. And this sounds harsh. We don't mean it harshly, but you will have noticed over the course of your life, certain friendships run a course, certain people when you're around them, you feel great. Certain people when you're around them, you feel like your energy is being sucked. Yeah. Um, certain venues or places that you go to, you might feel, oh, it's so clean. It's so clear. This is amazing. Other places you'll be like, ah, oh, this drains me. It, what we're saying in this series, it is time to choose like getting super, super clear. What do you want? Like what's that spiritual or what's the wealth you want to create or the love or the health in your life and removing all the noise, all the congestion, all the gunk, all the people and events that cannot support you, that do not have the ability to support you in your mission and your purpose. Right. And this is a piece, we talked about it in the New Year's resolution episode a few episodes ago. I think that was 140. Mm -hmm. But it's really important. The reason that we're expanding on it here is because it's the thing that nobody thinks about. Mm -hmm. They start to uh, think about all the cool things that you want to bring into your life. Maybe it's people or maybe it's uh, opportunities or whatever it is. But the cleaning out to make space for that is something that really easily gets overlooked. And it gets overlooked because everybody comes, especially at this time of year, gets really uh, fired up and really optimistic and all these Mm -hmm. things. But what I call that false optimism Mm -hmm. and the false optimism is all those other things. They're still there. Mm -hmm. They didn't really go anywhere. They're just hanging out. And I think about it like trying to hold a beach ball underwater. (laughs) Right. <laughs> okay, so you got this optimism up there, yeah. and then it's like, okay, like you're pushing the beach ball underwater, and that's the optimism is that force right. to push it down. Well, depending on how big that beach ball is, that can be really tiring. Like totally. that's not always easy. Right. And all it takes is a little slip up and it and floats to the top. Yeah, it just mm-hmm. it just explodes mm-hmm. on the surface. And, right. And that's a and it makes a mess. Right. So cleaning out, cleaning space. Now you mentioned something I thought was really interesting. Because, yeah, it's not always about just physically getting them out of your life. You know, we're not saying no, that No, we're not trying to be mean to people. No, but I think the piece for me is the mental real estate that we give people. Yes. That's the one. And that's when you know. That's when you know if somebody or a group, I mean, some of you listening might be in masterminds, you might be in associations, you 
might, you might be locked into some sort of meetup that you're just going to out of obligation. If you're dreading those groups, that's taking up mental real estate, emotional real estate, you need to go. Right. It, they, they no longer are supporting your mission. It's not the community that you really want to be in. That's true. Now, you know, something I think that's interesting about this as well, though, is it's not always comfortable to plug into new groups. Mm, this is true. Especially when you're uh, playing up a level, right. which, as you know, that's the right thing to do in my mind is, mm-hmm. you know, if you're the smartest person in the room, you should probably find mm-hmm. another room, mm-hmm. you know? Right. I think that's important. And sometimes that can make us uncomfortable. It brings up our stuff or maybe those same feelings of inadequacy right. or comparison or things like that as we get into it. But I think the part, the thing that I really want to invite everybody into here is that sense of discernment. Like, you know, when it's a low vibe group and everybody's just mm-hmm. kind of same, same mm-hmm. and in that same uh, kind of um same kind of mode, that same kind of vibe. All right. Well, that's probably one that you want to really consider. And you know, also when you're around success minded people, people who are maybe thinking differently and Mm -hmm. being differently than you're used to, that might make you uncomfortable. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a stretch. It's exciting. You get to learn from them. You get to elevate with them. And if they're good, success minded people, they want you to be successful as well. So, When you're in a good group or when you're around a good group of people, when you have that kind of community, it really is also of service. Yeah. It's not going to be of taking. And this is, again, you know, back to Facebook, if because there's a lot of groups there and we're going to give you um, an opportunity to get into my free group if you want. But there's many out there where people will go in just to take. Mm-hmm. Like they want to show off their stuff and start taking clients. I'm like, oh, that's so icky. Yeah. And karmically, it's so off. Yeah. It, it, you might get some clients, but, you know, if the attitude is I'm here to take, it is not going to work out in the long run. If the attitude is I'm here to serve, you know, if it's a business group or something, I'm here to serve and you end up with a client, that's a totally different, different thing. It right. just shows that, you know, the law of reciprocity. But wherever you are online, in person, Notice the people around you because it really does come. You're in their energy field and their fields are in yours. Right. And you've you've got to have people that have the ability to support you and people that you want to support. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The giving the giving is a really big part in those places where it's just it's a pitch fest or everybody's trying to kind of Mm -hmm. take or prove themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really competitive. Like, I don't know about you, but that to me is just. It's a non-starter. Yeah. It's like, no thanks. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just don't even want to play right. in that realm. Uh, and that that part to me is just because there's a total misunderstanding mm-hmm. of how to create success, how to create value, mm-hmm. and how to do something really cool in the world. And I think, you know, personal connection is a really big part of that. It's a big part of it. And as well, you know, in the real world, if you are going to meet someone for coffee or if you're going to put time towards a party or a group... You really want to make sure they are your people and that you are their people. Right. Like just make it congruent. Let it be community because, you know, we always come back to this time is really precious. Yeah. And if we're going to do things out of obligation or whatever, it's it's just never going to go well. Yeah. They say they say that you're the sum of the five people around you. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about this before, yeah. but really it's the sum of the energy. Of it's the, the energy people mm-hmm. around you. Totally. So that's why I said that, you know, about it might make you a little bit uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I say that for people like me mm-hmm. who, who little don't always like to get out there. It makes us a little uncomfortable and, you know, maybe a little more, you know, quote unquote introverted around right. that, uh, which as we know is a specific driver. Mm-hmm. But, but besides <laughs> that, uh, it's important to, to discern that and mm-hmm. to recognize, okay, You've been speaking the language of energy your whole life. Right. So you already know, you just might not have found the words for it. Exactly. And and to recognize that energy that is expansive and prosperous, Mm -hmm. that's not going to be where everybody's taken from one another. Right. That's going to be where people are really showing up to contribute. Exactly. And and, and it follows that that highest attitude of service, Mm -hmm. which is giving just to give. Yeah. Removing the gut. Like nature. Yeah, exactly. That follows the universal law. And I would suggest, too, if you're looking at some of your groups of friends or et cetera, other relationships, it can be a bold move to remove yourself 
from certain groups of friends or even a friend. And I'm not advocating that you go and cut off all your friendships. It's not that. It's, it's again, looking at how much time are you giving? Are you doing it out of obligation or are you having fun with these people? Or is it the kind of thing where you actually dread being around them? Then yeah. you know it's it's just totally wonky. You're doing it because you have to do it, right? You know, or you should. Mm-hmm. You should. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a big should there. Like oh, shoulds are heavy. Yeah, they it, just don't work. It gets in with the family stuff too, which can be real tricky. So that's that's why it's not always. It can't just be about cutting. No, if you just cut people out of your life left and right without really doing your inner work, well, right. all you're really doing is just. You're setting up a void to attract in the exact same kind of person. Thank you for saying that because it all comes back to frequency. Right. So if certain people are in your life that you're realizing you're not really vibing with them or they're not the vibe you want to be, you were of the same frequency at some point. That's why they came in. So I love that you said that, Nick, which is do your inner work. It's not about blaming. It's not about making other people wrong. We it's not that's not going to be healthy. But it's doing your inner work, raising your frequency, your vibe, so that you begin to attract organically the type of people that you really want to be around. And this is in relationships, too. You know, I did a dear friend student message me about feeling like, oh, I'm never going to find that person. I was like, Mm -hmm. let go and just be the lovely you that you are. And the more we adore self And we really hold this vision of, wow, if I'm looking for a relationship, what is that person about? See yourself in that vision. See what kind of relationship it is. That's the the community in an intimate relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's a really, really different way of being in that relationship. For For sure. And I think about sometimes when people feel the need to cut somebody out of their life like just full stop. There's yeah. that kind of, it's almost like it's a harsh. violence to it. Yeah. It's harshness harsh. mm-hmm. of, uh, you know, just you get out, you know, you're out of my life. All right. Well, maybe there are certain situations, extreme situations where that's, that's necessary, but what you're really doing there, what's really happening energetically is there's a resistance to it. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's not, it's not the clean, loving blessings, you know, cut the cords and you go have an awesome life. Right. It's not that at all. And it's, it's very much the opposite. Well, it's kind of making other people wrong. And that is not what community over competition is. Right. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. And what you wind up doing is again, leaving that kind of that broadcast frequency open to just dial into another same bad song right kind of thing yeah because if the inner work isn't done if you're not really knowing what it is you want to create or to elevate you will attract other people in of the same vibe yeah and and Mm -hmm. this is just by the by everybody is this is one of the reasons that we talk about forgiveness endlessly yeah on this and and i it is so humbling to me when it's time for somebody to go uh, the amount of inner work that mm-hmm. is needed on my part. Maybe it's just me, but mm-hmm. but it, well, that's really needed on my part in order to do that in a clean way, in in order to do it in the in the highest way possible mm-hmm. for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, I I just think it's really important. Well, this is good point. The forgiveness because it's been an interesting year for me. I'd say year and a half of people being in my life business that have been a bit interesting and couple like really being agitated with them and thinking that all of that is solved and then it pops back up and I'm like oh man there's still a seed of that like I'm still pissed about what he did or whatever (laughs) it is it's just another opportunity to get clear yeah and sometimes you know the more work we do the clearer we are there will be things that surface very quickly it's sort of like you know our guides our higher self saying okay Get that last layer off. Just keep right. going. Just keep going. Never think you're done. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Never, Never ever, think you're done. That's the wrong and that's, assumption. That's the humility. Anybody will get to that in the third episode, but uh, of this series. So the other piece that I was thinking about, okay, forgiveness and also a lot of gratitude, sure. right? For um, the people, the opportunities, the events in our lives right now. Because when we praise that, that vibe, that frequency tends to expand. Yeah. Yeah. It is very important. 
to really honor what he, what's here. And I think to honor your part in it. Mm-hmm. So it's cool to honor the folks who have shown up in such a beautiful way in your life. Right. And, and really supported you and yeah. been there for you and taught you and shared priceless, mm-hmm. priceless gifts with you. That's awesome. And you did that. Right. Too. Right, exactly. You, Celebrate really that. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm, you know, for to sure. recognize that there's certain things that you've been doing that mm-hmm. allowed that to happen. Right. You were available to it and it came in. So the more that you do that, the more that you kind of open that field to have more of it. You're seeing what worked through the eyes of gratitude. So you will attract more of those kinds of people. Right. Even if it's one person, you're like, I'm so grateful for this person in my life. Focus on that that energy, that frequency expands and you attract another human or opportunity or events of that same vibe. Yeah. You're bringing up a really, I think a really important topic as well. Important piece of this is the circles that Mm -hmm. we run in Mm -hmm. and that close inner circle, that's a small circle. It really is. The very, very inner circle is very small. That's not a place where you're going to have 50 or a hundred people. Probably three. Three to five people Mm -hmm. is a lot in that Mm -hmm. inner circle. And those are the, those are the people that you really, you know, you share the deep stuff with that you are really fully, you know, you share, you share the things that, that don't need to, (laughs) don't need to get out beyond that. That's where you share those dreams and visions that are still in their seedling form. They're not strong enough to sustain something beyond that, you know, that truly safe place. And that's okay. You're not doing anything wrong because you don't have 20 or 30 or 50 friends in that circle. Mm -hmm. You're actually doing something really right. Exactly. And then beyond that, you know, it's kind of about cleaning house. You know, if you've got somebody in that inner circle that is toxic and destructive, man. Yeah. That, that is something. That's going to be most profound to look at, examine and release. Yeah. That is something that you're really going to need to deal with, Mm -hmm. you know, post haste. Right. (laughs) Stat, you know, you want to get to that. Uh, And then outside of that, you know, you have that next layer of friends that are acquaintances. They're really lovely people. And that's a place where I think where there's a lot of opportunity for uh, bringing in new folks and just gracefully exiting with other folks and, you know, to kind of form your own community around that. Um, That's a place where a lot of opportunity lives that is really beautiful and expansive when you have that giving attitude right. and, and really appreciate people for being there and appreciate who they are right. rather than trying to make them super, super different. And then beyond that, you know, you've got that wider spectrum of people who are in your realm and in your sphere, and, mm-hmm. you know, on Facebook and Instagram, they want mm-hmm. people that connect with you there. And that's, that's cool too. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I think it pays to keep your Facebook feed clean if you spend, oh, yeah. if you spend time there for whatever reasons that you do, whether it's for your business or whether it's just personal for fun or mm-hmm. whatever, it really pays to keep that feed clean. I can't tell you how many people I, uh, snooze. I, I, I snoozed. Yeah, the I snooze. love the snooze button, um, <laughs> especially leading up to the election. Snooze. Yeah, snooze, you snooze. just get to choose if you want. Yeah, like I, there's certain things I just don't want in my field. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's a place to keep it clean yeah. so that it can be a friendly, loving space that isn't so rife with competition. Mm-hmm. Unless less you want it, but be prepared. There will be, there'll be an effect. Yeah. Well, yeah. Or that's there'll be, true. yeah. If you're mm-hmm. super into that. Um, mm-hmm. But I think that in, mm-hmm. in, in itself is, is a misunderstanding and right. also something to really be explored. Right. Now, I have one other point, but first I want to interject. If you're looking for an online community, a Facebook group, hop on over to my group, Nixon and as well, called Codes of Consciousness. The idea of this group, it's really about me popping in, giving some teachings, some posts. You can ask questions in there. It is not a place where people come in and teach their own stuff. Just to be really clear, I hold the, the frequency really strong in a certain way. But there are some cool teachings and it's going to ramp up this 2019. So you can find that at kismaawake.com forward slash groups. So K-I-S-M-A-A-W-A-K-E dot com forward slash groups. And I just want to really honor you for the way that you hold the space in that group. Thank you. It's important. Yeah, it's really awesome Uh, in the way that you participate and interact. I've... uh, made some efforts at starting a group of my own and it's it's, tricky. It's been a little hit or miss for Mm -hmm. me, honestly. And Mm -hmm. you've been a great model to kind of keep me on track Mm -hmm. with that. I think it's really awesome. in the Mm -hmm. way that you 
bring people into that and bring people into the conversation mm-hmm. is a, is a really cool well, thing. Well, really looking to amp that out and serve in a bigger way. So pop on over, everyone. We'll have the link in the show notes, too. I can't wait to see. <laughs> I know. Um, having said that, the, the the other point before we leave is with the looking at, okay, who really is not to be in my life right now as well? Be willing to explore, like when Nick was describing the circles, there's going to be an inner circle, really small, one that's slightly bigger, and then a couple circles that are like community and maybe in business colleagues. Be willing to step into those. Be willing to allow other people in and just test it out, see how it goes, because we don't want to be so firm and so boxed in that we're missing opportunities. Um, it is important to say no if you don't have time or you don't want to meet with somebody and they're trying to meet with you. It's important to be able to say no. The same token, sometimes we just need to say yes. Right, right. You and just need to follow. Are you saying that just for me? No, I'm saying it for everybody. <laughs> I think all of us. It's like just, you know, even if you say yes and you have a quick Zoom date with someone or you have a coffee and it's like, oh, okay, that's it. It's done. You don't have to do it again, but there's something, you know, sometimes people do show up in our realm for a reason. Yeah. There are no coincidences. So I encourage all of you, like, listen to your intuition. If there's someone that you're like, well, I'd really like to chat with, reach out. If they say no, they say no. Or if someone reaches out to you before you say no, just be like, well, what's 15 minutes? Maybe there's a little golden gem here. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really, uh, that's really helpful mm-hmm. you know, for me personally. Yeah. And I, I always love hearing you talk about these things because you're really good at that. The one last thing that I would say when you're really looking at this and kind of cleaning house, you know, mm-hmm. doing that detox of, mm-hmm. you know, people in, in your life and circles and communities and things like that is that it kind of comes back to that humility piece mm. where sometimes we just think like, oh, I should be able to handle, handle this. I should be able to deal with it. Yeah. Uh, whatever. But you know, you know, that one person that you share an idea with, and then they just dump all over it and how that feels. Look, if you're truly in a space where that is going to disrupt you, that's, you owe it to yourself to right. say no. Right. And to draw a line and mm-hmm. draw a boundary to mm-hmm. really honor that no. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it doesn't have to be a forever thing. Sometimes with family, it's just, it's more like a time out of like, all right, I just can't have that in my life right now. Yeah. I can't bring my business idea to my family because they might get all scared and try and dissuade me and out of protection. And really that fe- would feel heavy. Right. Right, right. Not, or they just don't yeah. understand. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, I, I'm not saying this specifically about me, but I think this could happen yeah. for everyone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there are certain things, you, you know, as you get into the laws of prosperity, it involves thinking about money and prosperity in a really, really different way. Yeah. And who wants to sit there and argue with your sibling or your parents about like why the way that you think is the right way to think? Yeah. Right? Like, it, it's, like, it's, why would you want to do that? It's you using know? energy that you don't want to use that way. Yeah. And it, and oftentimes, especially with those kinds of relationships, uh, whether it's, you know, closer in that mm-hmm. circle or, you know, a family is those are the ones that really tend to take up a lot of mental real estate right. because there's so much invested. Right. In it. Right. So So those are the ones where, man, I can't say it enough that it's just, it's really humbling how those things show up Mm -hmm. in their own way. And Mm -hmm. it's like, wow, I thought I was past that. Right. And there it is. And that's cool in the sense that there's another layer to be dealt with there. And it's, you, it just requires that level of humility to say, yep, this is where I am. So let's solve it and move on. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than thinking that you should be somewhere. Absolutely. Yeah. So to wrap things up. It takes some quiet space to ponder, think, you know, kind of start with what is it that you want? Who do you want to be? This is a good one to start with, like, what kind of person do you want to be? And then looking around you, what are the friends, the groups, et cetera, that support that? Mm -hmm. And what are some friends, groups that maybe don't have the ability to support that? And delicately, nicely, kindly begin to navigate and as always do your own work. So you're nice and clean and clear and you're not, you're not pushing people out of your life out of blame, wrongness, whatever. You're simply moving forward and deciding that whatever your path and purpose is, is super important. Right. And that's where you're headed. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't agree more. All right, everyone. So kismaawake.com forward slash groups. Yes. Join me there and send email info at sourcemovement.com if you have any questions or post under the show notes and make sure you tune in next week. It'll be part two of the series Spiritual Detox. And we're going to look at what are the mental and emotional things that need to be removed so that you can elevate in whatever way spiritually is right for you. Namaste. Peace. Hey, thanks for jamming with us today. And if you enjoy Illumination Podcast, please go ahead and share it with someone you love. Give us a rating, review, download our podcast. And remember, you can find us at illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. Talk to you soon. Namaste. Namaste.